Now, in C2, we know A2, and we just need to find B2 and D2. I wouldn't normalize C2 to find those values because what I would get is I would get a term that had B2 in it plus a term that had D2 in it equal to 1. And so I wouldn't be able to solve for either B2 or D2 by normalizing. But if I do a calculation where I basically say, well, C1 and C2 are orthogonal, which they must be, then hopefully one of these terms, this B2 or this D2 term, will cancel out and I'll be able to solve for one of the two, meaning one of those two terms, B2 or D2, will cancel out. So let's write an orthogonality test for C1 and C2 and see if we then get B2 or D2 to fall out of that. What that means then is that I'm going to write this integral 0 to infinity, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi. And I'm going to write C1 star, C2 times the volume element r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And because I know that they must be orthogonal, then that's going to be equal to 0. So let's explicitly write out C1 and C2, integral of 0 to infinity, integral to 0 to pi, integral to 0 to 2 pi. And so we have 1 half times 2s star plus root 3 over 2, 2pz star. And that's going to be multiplied by 1 half 2s plus b1 2px plus d, sorry, that's b2 plus d2 2pz. And then we have r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi is equal to 0. And so in this case now, I'm going to have to multiply out or distribute out these terms. I still have this integral 0 to infinity, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi. And so then I'll take this 1 half 2s star and I'll multiply it through all the terms on the right side here. So I've got 1 half times 1 half, so I get 1 quarter 2s star times 2s. I'm going to add b2 over 2, 2s star 2pz, or sorry, 2px. I'm going to have plus d2 over 2, 2s star 2pz. I'll distribute it in the second term. I'm going to have root 3 over 4, 2pz star times 2s, plus b2 times root 3 over 2, 2pz star 2px, plus d2 root 3 over 2, 2pz star, 2pz. And then with that multiplied, I'm going to have the r squared sine theta, dr, d theta, d phi, and that's still equal to 0. I'm going to apply again, assuming that these wave functions of these um, atomic orbitals are normalized, and that if they're not the same, then they're orthogonal. So 2s star times 2s, it's normalized. That integral will be equal to 1. 2s star times 2px, they're orthogonal, that'll be equal to 0. 2s star 2pz, they're orthogonal, so that's 0. 2pz star times 2s, they're orthogonal, so that's equal to 0. 2pz star times 2px, they're orthogonal, that's equal to 0. And finally, 2pz star times 2pz, they're normalized, so that's equal to 1. So the result that we end up with in the end is 1 quarter plus d2 square root of 3 over 2, and that's equal to 0. So you can see now that, that our strategy worked out, that by doing this orthogonality check, that we were able to cancel out all the b2 terms, where we had one b2 term here and another one here, because they were mixed in with functions that ended up being orthogonal to each other, and we were only left with a d2 term. And so now we can solve and actually explicitly find what d2 is. And so if we do that, we can say, well, d2 square root of 3 over 2 is equal to a negative 1 quarter. And then we can say that d2 is equal to negative 1 over 2 times the square root of 3. Now, the negative sign here actually makes a lot of sense. So if we go back up to our picture, 
we can see that we're trying to examine C2 right now and that we have this hybridized orbital that points in the negative z direction. So d2 should be a negative number. And if we look back at this diagram, we know that we've now got d2, we've got a2, so the only thing left to solve for is b2. And so now we can normalize c2, and then what we'll be left with is just b2 as a term. So let's do that. So we'll do normalization. of C2, which means that I have this integral 0 to infinity, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, and I have C2 star times C2, r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi, and that's equal to 1. So we'll explicitly write out C2 and C2 star. There's this integral 0 to infinity, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, C2 is 1 half 2s star plus b2 2px star plus, or sorry, minus 1 over 2 root 3 2pz star. And then that's multiplied by the complex conjugate of this. So then there's no stars. 1 half 2s plus b2 2px minus 1 over the square root of 2 times, the, sorry, 1 over 2 times the square root of 3, 2pz, and then we have our volume element, r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi, and that's equal to 1. Let's now distribute these terms. I still have my integrals, 0 to infinity, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi. I'll do the first term. I'll get 1 quarter 2s star 2s. To that I'm going to add b2 over 2, 2s star times 2px. Then I'm going to have minus 1 over 4 square root of 3, 2s star 2pz. Here's the second term. Plus b2 over 2, 2px star times 2s plus b2 squared 2px star 2px minus b2 over 2 square root of 3 2px star 2pz and then we have our third term minus 1 over 4 square root of 3 2pz star 2s minus b2 over 2 times the square root of 3, 2pz star, 2px, plus 1 over 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, 2pz star, 2pz. And then I have my r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi, and that's still equal to 1. So like before, let's cancel out these various terms. 2s star 2s, that's normalized, that'll add up to 1. 2s star 2px, they're orthogonal, that's 0. 2s star 2pz, they're orthogonal, that's equal to 0. 2px star 2s, they're orthogonal, that's equal to 0. 2px star 2px, they're normalized, that's equal to 1. 2px star 2pz, that goes to 0, they're orthogonal. 2pz star 2s, they're orthogonal, that's 0. 2pz star 2px, they're orthogonal, that's equal to 0. 2pz star times 2pz, they're normalized, that's equal to 1. So what we end up with in the end is 1 quarter plus b2 squared plus 1 twelfth, and that's equal to 1. So what I'm going to do now is rearrange and write in terms of a common denominator. b2 squared is equal to 12 over 12, which was this one term, minus 1 over 12, minus 3 over 12. And so b2 squared then is going to be equal to 12 minus 1 minus 3, so it's 8 over 12, which is then 2 over 3. And so that implies that 
b2 is then going to be equal to the square root of 2 over 3.